when we reach the other shore. Amen. There's a word. I'm going to ask that you stand across the church. We're going to ask that you turn to the uh, Mark, the second chapter. And we're going to look at the 23rd verse. Once you have it, say praise the Lord. Mark the second chapter, start at the 23rd verse. And I'd like for you to read the 27th and 28th verses with me. Now it happened that they went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. And as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? But he said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry? He, he and those with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar, the high priest, and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priest, and also gave some to those who were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Father God, I come in the precious name of Jesus, realizing my limitations, but knowing that there are no limits to what you can do. So I ask that you get this human out of the way and send forth your word as you have it preached and touch your people that they might receive it as you would have them receive it. This I ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Today, we'd like to spend a few moments as the Spirit leads us on the subject, do we owe it to God? Sabbath day, do we owe it to God or do we owe it to ourselves? The Sabbath day, do we owe it to God or do we owe it to ourselves? God has placed this sermon on my heart because Many of us look at church going and worshiping on Sunday as a task, as an obligation. Some look at it as an opportunity to socialize and meet other folks, especially of the opposite sex. A number of us brothers have been told by older people, Go to church, son, and meet yourself a good woman. I did meet my good woman in church, but it doesn't work for everybody. Amen. So today I, I like to dispel some of those thoughts because, you know, the devil is a liar. And you may not know it, but many of your convictions and feelings have been influenced by the devil through the years. So you do not realize it is the devil influencing you and making you feel a certain way about things. And therefore you assume that it is a natural feeling. You did not wake up thinking that church was a terrible thing. Uh, what happened is that you heard so many people talk about church. Uh, and you've heard so many people say, I, I got to go to church. Some of you may have said it. I got to go to church. Not, I've got to go because I'm inspired and, and, and excited about it, but you say, I got to go. Like, if I don't go to church, then I'm going to be punished or things are not right. And we make it look like church is uh, a negative uh, experience that we must encounter. And therefore, if we go and don't get a little feel good or excitement like we got this morning, we feel disappointed in our worship experience and we feel like, Man, I could have stayed home for that. That, that. that preacher, he ain't preach anything worth while. Let me, why did I get out of my bed? But I want to I wanna quote something from Bond's uh, notes on the Bible. Uh, and I mentioned this morning that my wife and I have our different commentaries we prefer. 
She's a Matthew Henry fan. I'm a Bondsmith man. Amen. He says the Sabbath was made for man. Remember, man was not made for the Sabbath. For his rest from toil, it was made for man's rest from toil, his rest from the cares and anxieties of the world. It was made to give him an opportunity to call off his attention from earthly concerns and to direct it to the affairs of eternity. Sabbath was a kind provision for man that he might refresh his body by relaxing his labors, that he might have undisturbed time to seek the consolation of religion, to cheer him in anxieties and sorrows of a troubled world, and that it might render to God that homage which is most justly due to him as the creator, preserver, benefactor, and redeemer of the world. Look at somebody and say, uh, Sabbath is good for you. And the enemy has convinced us that, oh, we got to get dressed and all of those things. Now you don't even have to get dressed to go to church and, and worship God. In order that you might understand and not be too confused, there are many people who say that the true Sabbath is a Saturday. And if you look at the creation pattern, which tells us that God created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested, then you'll find that the seventh day is a day of rest. And the true definition for the word Sabbath is not seven, but is rest. So the Sabbath refers to a day of rest. Even though I've had difficulty really putting it, it together because when I read in the Old Testament about the celebration of the Sabbath, I discovered that it is not only a day of rest, but it's a day of worship. Now, I made this dreadful mistake of separating worship from rest. You see, and, 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 and it confused me because you said a day of rest, but I had been caught up in the same concept most of you. Going to church ain't rest. Amen? No matter how good the choir sings or great the sermon is, going to church is not rest. Amen? But then I discovered that what happens when we sit down in the midst of the congregation and we, and, and, and we have been through all of the labors of the week and the toys of the week and dealing with family issues and, and work issues and, and all kind of issues and some of them you even bring them in with you. But somehow as you sit there, there's a great kind of a cleansing of your spirit that occurs that helps you to actually rest. So actually I'm, I'm better able to rest inside the house of God than I even inside my bedroom in my home. Because even as you try to rest in your home, there are distractions. There are people who are calling on you and noise going around. And, and then if nothing else, some noise, the appliance will disturb you. It is always something that seems to want to break your, 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 your rest and you just want to get away from things. And then even, I, I'm a guy I like to take my attitude break. You know my attitude break. I've been taking them for quite a few years. That's when I'm ready to cut somebody's head off, chop their head off, or uh, call them some name, or say something I shouldn't do as a preacher that I hate the rest of my life, and I have to live with it. Then I tell my wife, uh, I say, honey, I need an attitude break. She instantly gets on the phone and calls the mountains so that I can go there for a couple of days. But see, that doesn't work like the house of God. Because you may look at the dancing as entertainment or, or the music that men doing such a great job as, as entertainment. But, but the truth about it is that it is not just entertainment to the eyes. Uh, while you're looking at the dancing, the music is doing something to you. The energy of the young people is doing something. The, the voices of the man is doing something. Some things you don't even know is doing to you. But when you, you know that when you get up out of the place, you find that I have rested without even knowing I rested. I, I I may have done the holy dance there. I may have shouted all over the place. But somehow there's the effect of rest in my beings because it, it releases something out of me. Something drains out of me that allows my soul to feel all right. One writer said, when there's no Sabbath, there's ignorance, vice, disorder, and crime. He said, on that holy day, the poor and the ignorant as well as the learned, have undisturbed time to learn the requirements of religion. 
The nature borrows the law of God and the way of salvation. I, I, I don't know about you, but I've been going to church all my life. Didn't understand it when I was young because I wasn't going through anything when I was young. Uh, I would go to the, to the church and I would even make fun of the choir as they would be singing. I'd be making noise because they were nice and loud. I was in a loud Baptist church. Amen. They'd be singing praises to the Lord. I'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I thank God punished me. I can't sing today because I messed up. Amen. But then as I got older and realized that it didn't even matter how good the sermon was, even a so-called illiterate, so-called limited intelligence preachers would have something from the Bible and maybe not be quoted right. They would say something that made a difference in my life. Like God had given them some divine wisdom. They, some of them couldn't even read. They had heard it from the preacher before, the preacher before. And they, and they told us, you know what I'm talking about, told the story. And that story does something for your soul. It, it, it lets you know you're loved and you're cared for. And, and, and somebody said, oh, I, I can get that one. To, no, it, it, you, you got to be refilled. If I drive to Virginia, I got to put some gas in my car. If you're living in through every day you live, something's being drained out of you. Something's being drained out of you emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Something's always been drained out of you. And, I, and the church becomes a, a renewal, a feeling station. So it's not just an act of labor. The scripture tells us uh, in a mighty important way the power of the Sabbath. Now it starts off with Jesus working on the Sabbath. But they were complaining because he was breaking the old law of the church. We say it every Sunday. We don't pay attention to it every first Sunday we say it. We don't pay attention to it. Thou should not do the work. Not maid servant, that man servant, the ox, the ass, no anything is in your house. Anybody pay attention to that? Huh? Get out of here as fast as you can. Amen. Even preachers ain't got time for church. Help me somebody. I always find it to be a joke. I love the Lord, but I got a baseball game this afternoon. The Sabbath rest, that is rest of one day and seven made for man. One seventh of your life, if you take that break, history, research has shown that you experience, that you have a, a more prosperous life, you have a healthier life, and, 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 and you have a higher moral life. You will live longer, church folks, live longer. Amen. Why do you live longer? Because I take it to the Lord. And leave it there. Oh. And even those of you who like to hold on the power of the word and the music and just that presence among others who are going through the same thing you're going through pulls it out of you anyway. And even though you like to hold on, you are better able. You may not empty it all because you're holding on, but God has a way of emptying the trash. Deuteronomy 5.12 tells us, observe the Sabbath day. Keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days shall you do your work. Some of you don't do it in any way, so. And if you stay home, you don't do it either. Lord, I'm not talking about anybody. He says, remember where you came from. He said to the Israelites, remember you were slaves. Black folks, remember you were slaves. Indigent servants. Discriminated against. You are a miracle. How did you survive? How did 
did you survive 200 years? I don't know about you, but the old folks would tell you. We just had a little talk with Jesus. Told him all about our troubles. Ah, uh, church, we got air conditioning. We got heat. I passed in the church that you, you, you had to come in early in the morning the night before and put some coal in the pot. My grandparents worship in a church that you always wanted to sit up front because that's where the space heater was. Yeah, man? And it was hot. Some of you know about it right here on this corner. No air conditioning, that right? Huh? Josh? Isn't that right? Fanning yourself all the way. A bunch of colored folks in a tight place. And we complain. Isaiah says, I want you to hear this, and I'm ready to sit down. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, if you direct your attention away from serving Jesus, If you stop doing, rather, if you stop doing your pleasure on God's day, it says from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and if you call the Sabbath a delight, oh Lord have mercy. How many say, oh, I'm so glad I, I hope Sunday will come? You ain't saying it because the devil got you convinced. So convinced that you will go to a boring show. Stay there for two hours and not complain. Right. Amen. Yes. But come into the house of God. Jeez. Two hours. Yes. Two hours. Yes. Not realizing the power of God. Yes. Working your situation out. Yes. While you're inside the house of God. Not realizing that you're in the show, you just sitting there. All you get is a momentary refresher, if that much. But in the house of God, while you're sitting there, he's working it out. He's in your mind. You in church, he's messing with that neighbor who's giving you trouble. You in church, he's talking to that boss on your job. You in church, he's talking to that teenager you left at home. You in church, he's working on that mate of yours. Help me, somebody. You in church, he's telling that doctor how to help you out. in some chair. Things are happening. Yeah. Well, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you what the word tells us. Isaiah, he said, if you delight in my day, he said, the holy day of the Lord, let it honorable. And if you honor him, not doing your own thing, not finding your own pleasure, not speaking your own words, then you should delight yourself in the Lord. And then he says, I, and God ain't man, and God don't lie. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. Ah, see, the Bible says, uh, but first, you must start respecting the Sabbath. As a joy for day of worship. Yeah. When it looks like it's going to snow, you say, Lord, don't let it snow so I can come into the house of God. Because I know I'm going to be blessed there. Uh-huh. I don't care who sings. I don't care who preaches. I don't care who dances. Who ushers. All I know is I'm going to be in the house of God. And no matter who else is there, if God is there, yeah. 
see if reversion says you must stop doing and saying whatever you please on God's day. Mm. Then you will truly enjoy knowing the Lord. Then I like this. He said, He will let you rise from the highest mountain. Ah, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you may say, but he's the high part of the hall. Help me, somebody. Yeah. If you worship the Lord, uh, uh, he will bless you with the land of your ancestors. Uh, if you worship the Lord, he will wipe that mess out of your way. He'll make a way out of no way. See, God is working right now. Somebody's going to go home today and, and see that a problem has been resolved. Yeah. God is working right now. Right in your system. You may have come in with a heavy burden and God is already lifting it up. He's, I got it. He's telling you, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. The Sabbath is made for man. Not man for the Sabbath. I'm finished. 